everyone, it's Vanessa. Today I wanted to let you know what books I consider the best that I read in 2018. I'm gonna go through all of them. This is going to include the fiction, the nonfiction, and the graphic novels. I think for the fiction and nonfiction there's seven books each, and then for the graphic novels I put it down to about four or five because one batch is from the same author. Not all five star reads are like my number one read. I think it's the one that left like the biggest imprint, the one that was the most engaging and the one that I'm still thinking about. I don't think favorites really is the same thing as like a five star read. Let's get through them and I'm gonna be very brief because I've mentioned these books in my videos this past year. So I'll go first through my top fiction books of the year and I'll go from seven up. Number seven is The Epic Fail of Arturo Zamora. This is a story about gentrification in a neighborhood in Miami and it just has really good family structure. The main character Arturo is so in tune with his family and gets the courage to stand up for his community because of his family. It was a very, very warm read. And if you're a middle grade reader, you're going to find a lot of middle grade books in this list. That was one of my goals in 2018, and a lot of them ended up on my top books. Number six on my list is one that I just mentioned in my last video, and that's The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. I really enjoyed this book for the cozy atmosphere that it provided me. I'm not one that reads a lot of historical fiction, but I really loved the World War II story here and how historical situations were making these kids end up in the countryside. Really what I love here is the, the found family and the relationship that is developed between what were strangers and seeing our main character grow and learn so much about herself to learn to let other people love her as well. Number five on my list is The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I devoured this book on audiobook. I loved the narration which was done by the author. The story had a lot of things that connected it to my own upbringing and just kind of like some of the ideas that some Latinx parents might have about young daughters and I just loved like the style of it and the delivery of it through the audio narration. It's a story in verse and it did feel like I was like kind of in a poetry slam setting and I just loved consuming it that way. Number four on my list is The Magpie Murders by Anthony Horowitz. This was one of the standout mysteries of the year I think. One that I still think about and that I still want to find more mysteries like it. My favorite aspect about this story was the story in the story and mostly the setting of that story and the characters in that story who are very charming. I really enjoyed picking apart the motivations of each character. Overall it was a pretty good read and one that I would also recommend on audio. Number three on my list is Normal People by Sally Rooney, another one that I also just mentioned in my last video. This one came at the end of the year, literally finished it the last day of the year, and I'm so glad that it ended up on my list this year. I felt like there was something missing, and this was the only real adult fiction, I think, on this whole list, where I was like really excited reading it, super engaged, and read it so quickly. But I think that it has enough going for it that it's going to keep your attention, and it has fantastic writing. Number two on my list is another middle grade and this one is Matilda. This was the first year that I read Roald Dahl. Hmm, where have I been? But this was so fantastic. It brought me to my childhood of growing up with the movie and loving the movie so much and the narration was by Kate Winslet who did a marvelous job. I just loved all of the characters so much. They're so um, hypocritical and like ridiculous for parents and for authority figures but just it was completely sold in this world. It's just a great story. So Especially if you are Matilda-esque, if you feel kind of like you you were a shy child and a book lover, I think that you would love Matilda. And then lastly, I think my favorite book of the year, even though I did not rate it five stars, was Sadie by Courtney Summers. Again, might be the audio narration and the full cast production of it. It might be the fact that I listened to so many true crime podcasts this year and this just added to that experience as well. But it just had that propelling story that just kept you going. I'm pretty sure I finished this book in about two days. If you're someone that is very interested in true crime and in kind of like girls taking control and finding justice for themselves kind of stories, coming of age sort of stories, I would definitely recommend Sadie. Please listen to it on audiobook because a lot of work went into that and it's so worth it. Let's go through non-fiction books and again with this one I came up with seven books total. Number seven on the list is The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. This was very informative for me. It's not necessarily something that you're going to zip 
through. It's not a narrative nonfiction, and it's not a book that is really like exciting to read. It is just, I think, so important and it's on my list because it has informed so many other aspects of my reading where things that I have read in years past got information from this book. Number six is The Glass Castle. I think this was the first book that I read in 2018. I'm still thinking about it. I still haven't watched the movie, but I felt like it had such an interesting story. Not one that I agreed with and one that definitely when you were reading it you were like, wow, this is abuse. But it's very fascinating to see how the author thinks about her childhood and like how she viewed things when she was a child and then how she views it today. I think she still has great love for all of the people in her life who may have done things to her that are not necessarily exemplary parenthood, but it, it was just fascinating to see how she put together that story of her life. Number five on my list is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. Again, another one that's very beloved here and one that I read for the first time in 2018. I thought it was really funny in part and I love the audiobook for that reasoning as well. Number four is The Destiny of the Republic, which is a history history nonfiction and one that I was recommended to by someone at work. It was also very good on audiobook and we follow the assassination of Garfield who was a president that I didn't know very much about so it was really interesting to learn about his upbringing, his kind of rags to presidency story, just to hear what it was like to live in that time period, what security was like and why assassins were doing these kinds of things. Also very interesting to hear about how medicine was thought of in that time and how to save someone from a bullet wound. Things that we would scream out loud if they were done today. Number two on my list is Becoming by Michelle Obama. A very fantastic memoir and one that I, I feel like everyone knows exists at least. Definitely would recommend the audiobook. Another one that I read really quickly even though it was pretty long because of how Michelle drove the book. I didn't know a lot about her before I read the book, especially about her childhood and her family life, so it was, it was very interesting for me to learn about her dad and her brother and her mom and to see how she met Barack Obama, to see how she thinks about motherhood and then what it was like to end up at the White House. Very good memoir. This is probably of no surprise, but my favorite nonfiction book of the year is A False Report by T. Christian Miller and Ken Armstrong. This book took over my life when I listened to it on audiobook and when I finished reading reading it, I had a very hard time picking up anything else after it. It was like a week later and I still hadn't found an audiobook that was keeping my attention. So that kind of tells you how much this like took over my brain. It is a narrative nonfiction book that focuses on one person who was accused of making a false report of rape and then you see how it is connected to a serial rapist out in Colorado. And it was very important for me to hear all of the survivors stories as well as how a few lady detectives got this solved pretty much. If you read true crime, I think this is great. And if you're a person that really enjoys books where justice is done and justice happens, this is a book that I would also recommend for that. All right, and then graphic novels. I have five total, but I would say four because two are from the same author, like I was mentioning earlier. My number four graphic novel that I read is Rx, and this was a very funny, but also at the same time very truthful account of what it's like to live with bipolar disorder and what it's like to have manic episodes and how you're treated as an adult when you're having these episodes by your family and your friends and work people. Because you're supposed to, as an adult, have your shit together, and it sort of seems like the people around you maybe don't trust you to have your shit together because you have a bipolar disorder. Just overall, I think that the illustrations are very energetic and very honest about what it's like to have a manic episode, and I would recommend it just for the illustrations. Number three on my list is Sabrina, and this is a book that I I don't think it's perfect and I did have a few problems with it, but it's a book that made me think a lot while I was reading it, made me kind of connect what the author was getting at in the story to like our present day and I think that's what I most valued about it. Political commentary that was subvert and quiet and you only started connecting it as you kept reading along like what he's really getting at is this situation in 2016 or this situation in 2017. The illustrations and the lettering is very uh, I would say bland but I think he's doing it for a purpose too. Number two on my list are the two 
um, David Small books that I read this year and that's Stitches and Home After Dark. Stitches is a graphic memoir so it details his own upbringing, dysfunctional family that he grew up with and an illness that he was dealing with as a child as well. And then Home After Dark is a I would say gritty coming of age story of a young boy again with dysfunctional families and dysfunctional peers as well. These are not happy stories but I think that they are very honest. Yeah that's actually how life is. I love David Small's illustrations. I think his style of illustration is probably up there with my my most favorite. The best graphic novel that I read this year is Escape from Syria. It's a fictionalized story that takes reporting into account to create real life situations. I think what makes this my favorite of the year is how hard it hit me in the heart, in the gut, in the head. Every time that I, I passed through the pages I couldn't help myself and I just cried thinking about what Syrian refugees go through and refugees in general go through and the situations that they are placed in. And this is so important I think because how the author and illustrators put it together, you can see in the end of the book where they got that specific fact from. So it all is supplemented and all the emotional threads are there to make this the best graphic novel I read this year. Try to read this one and not cry. It's very hard. That is it. That's my favorite books of the year. All of my favorite fiction, nonfiction, and graphic novels of the year. Thanks so much for watching my video. I hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next one. Bye bye.